basic model, two basic models to build rainfall runoff modeling in hydrology. Usually, we always start in hydrology from these two models, which describe complementary behaviors of catchments. In the case of the time area method, I just want to remind you that the hydrograph was obtained by simply transferring mass of water along the catchment. Okay, so we assume that rainfall falls over the catchment and we transfer the mass of water along the catchment downstream. There is no water storage in the catchment accordingly to the time area method. It's just mass transfer. Of course, you have a temporary storage, which is given by the water that is traveling. But this is just a storage that is due to water traveling along the catchment downstream. You don't have any storage within the catchment of water that uh, is stored in the groundwater reservoirs, etc. It's just water translating downstream. And uh, this uh, model, the time area method, can be used when the storage of water in the catchment is very limited. Because indeed, if you look at the amount of water that is stored in the catchment, it's just the water traveling. So you have a very small volume of water that is stored during the event. If you deal with catchments that are impervious, not much permeable, so that indeed they don't store much water, the time area method is fine. But if you deal with the flat catchment, which are typically more permeable than steep catchment, then you have a considerable water storage in the catchment. The time area method is not a good solution in this case. You need a model that can simulate this storage. So, how can we build a model that describes the water storage in the catchment? First of all, let's start from a conceptual scheme. Let's Let's imagine that the catchment is like a tank. And in this tank, we have rainfall entering in, IT. And let me, sorry, let me use the symbol PT in this case. What is P? P is basically the product of IT, which is the intensity of rainfall, times the area of the catchment. So the unit of measure is a volume over time. It's just a convention. When you deal with the linear reservoir, all the, all the textbooks, textbooks use PT, which is, uh, again, it's uh, product of uh, intensity of rainfall times the area of the catchment. So you can uh, imagine that the catchment is like a tank that receives uh, rainfall. And if you want to model the storage, you can imagine that the catchment schematizes a tank is characterized at each time t by a water storage, wt. Which, have, which can be significant. And uh, you can schematize the outflow at the outlet of the catchment, QT, as uh, an outflow from a bottom hole.
this is a typical conceptual scheme. You see, we are emulating what actually happens, what happens in reality. But of course, this is a simple schematization. Catchment doesn't work like this. But it's a useful scheme in any case because it emulates what happens. So for, for this reason, we use the word conceptual. And uh, of course, uh, if we want uh, to study how this system works uh, and want to use this scheme, this system, to emulate the catchment, we have to build, uh, to write down mathematical equations that describe uh, the system. And uh, first of all, uh, I notice that uh, my unknown is QT, of course. <coughs> my input data is precipitation, which is known. But if I want to use this scheme, which again has the peculiar behavior of being able to simulate the water storage, if I want to use this scheme, I have to introduce an additional state variable, which is the volume of water that is stored in the catchment at time t. It means that I have two unknowns. I have to write down two equations. The first one can be, again, the mass balance equation. So let's write the PT minus QT, namely the difference between precipitation and outflow at time T is uh, equal to the change, the variation, the infinitesimal variation of WT over T. This is, of course, a mass balance equation that is to understand. you can recognize uh, your input term, which is uh, ED, but you have two unknowns. So again, it is clear that you have to write down a second equation. And uh, the second equation should connect uh, the outflow of QT, which is our real unknown, to the state variable WT. If I can find a connection, uh, an equation connected these two equations, sorry, these two variables, then I am done. What could be the connection? First of all, the connection is between what? Between the outflow and the water storage in this tank. And I can immediately recognize that accordingly to this scheme, the connection is given by uh, an outflow relationship. And the outflow relationship in this case is would be, accordingly to physics, it would be the Torricelli law. The Torricelli law, which says that Q can be expressed, QT, as the product of, uh, uh, let me call this A, lowercase a, which is the area of uh, this orifice here the area of this hole here, which multiplies, which is fixed, which multiplies the velocity of water through the orifice. And then usually we uh, put a coefficient here, C1. So this is the type of relationship that we should consider. and. Uh, how can we express this velocity? You remember that uh, Torice Torricelli's equation says that uh, if you have a, a given a height of water in the tank, which depends on the volume of water stored in the tank, you can derive the velocity in this way as uh, the square root of, of 2 gh 
and H depends on W. To be correct, W depending on T. So there is the dependence on T that is uh, made explicit. So this is uh, the kind of relationship that I should use accordingly to physics uh, if I accepted that this scheme is representative of reality. However, we know that this scheme is an approximation. So, of course, this uh, equation that I'm writing that uses Torricelli's law would be an approximation because it's the scheme that it's an approximation. Therefore, this kind of equation, if I used it, would be empirical, not really physically based. Would be conceptual because it makes use of a concept, namely a scheme that is similar to reality but it's not really physically based. I hope you can understand the difference. Because I am using a formula that is physically based, but the scheme is an approximation of reality. It's a conceptual approximation of reality. Therefore, the equation becomes conceptual. Now, this equation, if I used it, would be nonlinear, a complication. So the idea is, given that this relationship is already an approximation, a nonlinear approximation, let's make it simpler using, by using a linear equation. So the idea is to use a relationship like Q function of t equal to W function of t divided by k. This is a linear equation. Of course, it's again empirical. It's an approximation of this physically based equation that is applied to a conceptual scheme. So we are introducing one more approximation, but with the advantage of introducing and using a linear relationship. Why we are introducing this linear relationship? Because the linear models are simpler. If we want to keep the model simple, it's better to stay within linearity. You will see that at the end, I will get a relationship between rainfall and runoff that is linear. OK, so. At this point, I can embed this equation within the first one. I can combine the two, as you well remember, because maybe that you don't remember, but you did it. So I'm sure that you remember something. So let me write now. I am just substituting here W with uh, a W value that is derived from this equation. So I can write that P T minus Q T is equal to K the Q T over the T. see that W is equal to K that multiplies Q. So K is a constant. So that's it. The nice thing is that we can integrate this equation quite easily to get the integral in analytical form. Because you see that uh, 
the river flow is expressed here in, uh, in, uh, in a derivative form. So we need to integrate this equation to get an explicit relationship for QT. We have to perform an integration to get QT. Because uh, here we have the derivative of QT that is uh, appearing in this equation, so we have to integrate. OK, now, I said the nice thing is that we can integrate analytically this equation. Let's, let's do it. And we need to multiply both terms, left hand and right hand side, times this quantity here, e to the power of t over k. So if I multiply both sides for e to the power of t over k, I obtain pt multiplied by e to the power of t over k minus, uh, let me bring this term on the right hand side. So I can write equal to qt multiplied by e to the power of t over k plus q aqt over kt. OK. Now let me divide everything by k, therefore obtaining, I'm just rewriting, 1 over k e t e t over k equal to 1 over k q t e t over k plus the u t over the t over k. Very good. Hopefully. <clears throat> okay, now please note that what is this? This is uh, the derivative of qt times e. Let's, uh, let's check. This is a product of two quantities qt and e to the power of t over k. The derivative is given by the derivative of the first times the second as is. So the qt over the t times the second as is. Plus the first as is qt times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to the power of t over k is the same quantity multiplied by the derivative of the exponent, which is 1 over k. So you get this. Now, we can integrate both sides. Between uh, what? Between uh, zero, beginning of the rainfall event, beginning of rainfall pt, to a given time t star, same symbol that I used last time for the time area method. And uh, in the left hand side, I get again 1 over k, p tau, E T over K in the tau. Mm, sorry. Uh, tau over K.
second uh, right hand side again integral zero to star of what of the derivative mm -hmm. and uh, therefore we can skip the integral indeed we can just write in this way because it's the integral of a derivative we can just write in this way qt e t over k between 0 and t star okay now let me write down this, uh, let me shift uh, left hand side and right hand side so I bring uh, the right hand side to the left hand side just because uh, for easy of write, easiness of writing and uh, in order to write down this uh, relationship I have to compute the value of qt times uh, e t over k for 0 and t star so simply what I have to write is q t star which is my unknown times e to the power of t star over k minus the value at 0 the value at 0 is e to the power, to the power of 0 because t equals 0 e to the power of 0 is 1 so it reduces to q0 <coughs> which means a river flow at the beginning of the rainfall event this is equal to, I write again the same integral here, 0 t star 1 over k e tau e tau over k in the tau we are almost ready because now what we have to do is to make explicit the value of q t star which is our unknown what I want to do is to compute the river flow at any arbitrary time t star so my unknown is just q t star and so let me compute it Now I can write down q t star is equal to let me let me just keep e to the power of t star over k at the left hand side for just one more one more step. So this is equal to, I just, uh, in this computation, I just bring uh, q0 to the right hand side. So I just write integral 0 t star, I write again 1 over k, p tau, e tau over k in the tau, plus q0, very simple. And now I have to divide both sides by e to the power of t star over k. Therefore, obtaining finally q t star is equal to. Let me write this one first, which is easier. q0 e minus t star over k. This is very easy.
And this is a term that takes into account the contribution given by the river flow that was there before the event. So this is a depletion term. Depletion is alimento. Meaning that you have a Q0 flowing in the river. And even if it not rained, it would produce a contribution, this Q0, after a time t star. And the contribution is given by this depletion term, which vanishes for increasing t star. And this is understandable. You expect that the contribution of the river flow at the beginning of the event, the initial condition, vanishes, the effect of the initial condition vanishes for increasing time. OK, now let me instead divide the integral by e to the power of t star over k. Please note that this is a constant. We can bring it inside the integral. OK, therefore obtaining integral between 0 and t star of Let me write uh, rainfall first, p tau, which multiplies 1 over k which multiplies e to the power of tau over k which multiplies again e to the power of minus t star over k. Okay. Here, sorry, I went a bit uh, upward. <laughs> I rewrite this term here to make it on the same line. Plus Q0 e minus T star over K. Here I am missing a tau. And then you can notice that I can simplify this relationship by, because this is a product of, uh, of uh, that can be simplified, can be written in a simplified way. And so let me write down the final result. which is qt star equal to the integral of between 0 and t star of what of p tau e to the power of minus t star minus tau over k plus q0 e minus t star over k. Please note that the result uh, would have been uh, tau minus t star. I changed the sign to bring it to t star minus tau. The reason is that I wanted uh, the sign of the exponential function to be negative for for getting an analogy with the, the sign of the exponential function in the second term at the right hand side. Just, it's just a matter of notation. OK, this is the final result. Please note that I could write it in the same, in a different way, which is uh, the same meaning, with the same meaning. I could write it in this way. And I want to make it clear, because in some text, you find this second form. And uh, in order to get the second form, I need to make, uh, to change the variable of integration. And the result is that I can get it in this form, p t star minus tau, which multiplies e minus tau over k 
in the tau plus q zero e minus e star over here. It's the same thing. If you think about uh, the two forms, it's the same thing. Because uh, in this case, uh, you start from t star with the rainfall at time t star, and you go back in time with the rainfall, and you move forward in time with the exponential. Here, you go forward in time with the rainfall, and backward in time with the exponential. Basically, it's just the order in, in the integral that changes, but you get the, if you, you get the same contributions. But if you missing <coughs> 1 over k, no? Yes, some, somewhere is missing 1 over k here, yeah, sorry. OK. Now, let me conclude by First of all, by saying uh, some uh, additional consideration. First of all, if you uh, use a constant rainfall, you can uh, bring a rainfall outside the integral, and you get uh, uh, very easily you can uh, resolve this integral analytically. And. Uh, Let me try to do it. So let's assume that rainfall is constant. Then we can write, and let's, uh, uh, at this stage, let's neglect just for simplicity q0. Let's assume that q0 is 0, just for simplicity. Okay. And therefore, we can get that q t star is equal to p times the integral between 0 and t star of 1 over p over k. Let's bring also k outside the integration. And it's uh, the integral of, uh, of uh, e minus uh, okay let's use the second the second uh, form which is simpler minus tau over k in the tau hmm? because uh, rainfall is constant so we can use this and this becomes equal to q e star is equal to uh, probably it's better if I kept uh, k inside the integral. Sorry, let's put it here because the integral becomes simpler. So this is equal to p, which uh, multiplies what uh, I think it's. Uh, e to the power of p over k, let me think about the sign, computed between 0 and t star. So if I take the derivative of this, is uh, minus, I take the derivative, is minus, I think it is minus here. Because, of course, the derivative of uh, e to the power of minus t over k is, again, e to the power of minus t over k, which multiplies minus 1 over k. So, yes. And therefore, this becomes equal to p, which multiplies. Let's compute this uh, relationship here uh, for t equals 0, it becomes uh, minus 1 e to the power of 0 of course is 1, so minus 1 and uh, minus 
minus let me e to the power of minus t star over k let me stop here okay and uh, let me think about it because there is something here which is not uh, correct in the sign, so I have to because it should be, should be. Okay. should be like so, and I'm trying to understand where is the mistake. Should be plus one, so. Ah, okay, yeah, because because okay, uh, this is minus. It's it's minus because it's uh, uh, computed uh, for t equal uh, t star minus uh, the value at t equal zero. So I have to change the sign here. Okay, it's like so. Okay. And uh, it's uh, interesting to see what is actually the shape of this hydrograph. Because this allows us to understand that the model is reasonable. Let me draw a graph now. 